Well, welcome back to the lab. Um, today on the bench, we have the 7603 that we repaired in a previous video. There's nothing really wrong with the 7603. Um, everything's working just fine. Unit's working well. There seemed to be a lot of uh, interest in the video, so what I thought I would do is I'm going to do a calibration on the vertical plug-in. So the vertical plug-in is the heart of the scope. It drives the amplitude channel. The horizontal plug-in drives the time base, or it is the time base, drives the horizontal channel. This is a two vertical, one horizontal scope. So we have two verticals and the time base. So what I thought I'd do is this is the simplest one of the simplest time bases I can I can find. Also, they're very inexpensive. Um, I have seen these vertical plugins on eBay as low as fifty dollars, forty dollars for the plugin. The I believe the seven A fifteen is a seventy five megahertz. Let me look that up. Um, vertical plugin. Yes, so in a 7700 series scope, it is a 75 megahertz plug-in. In a 7500 series scope, it's a 60 megahertz plug-in. So with this being a 76, we'll call it 70, 70 megahertz. So I'm actually going to use this particular frame in XY mode. So I'll have a 7A15 and a 7A15 to give me XY on the display. And then for this, I have a I have something special that's going to live in here. I have yet another curve tracer, seven CTN, I think is the number that I'll get out and I'll put in here after we get the two vertical amplifiers calibrated because the one of the vertical amplifiers has to be over here for the curve tracer because there's a cord that comes out and plugs in so it can do the deflections. Um, I have a plug-in that's seen better days. Not a bad plug-in. I just need to find a new um, knob and a uh, variable shaft that goes all the way back to here to get this guy fixed. So he actually still works. Everything's good. Just the knob got busted off. This control's a little tight up here. I need to loosen that up. But so what I'm going to do here is I've had all the test gear warming up for now multiple hours. Everything's been on. Uh, the 184 it says it has the longest warm up time because it needs to thermal soak the crystal and that takes two hours. So what I'm going to do now is I've got the side panel off over here. I'm going to do a calibration on the vertical amplifier. This time base is actually calibrated. You don't need a calibrated time base to do this because this is just providing sweep. There there aren't any measurements based off of it. The important part is the signal sources for the vertical plug-in. So I have a calibration document which was surprising because I've calibrated some 7A26s and they're a lot longer but this is just a couple of pages. Nothing, Nothing terrible. So, but what I'll do different this time is the, because I have a secondary plug-in, I will uh, point out where the adjustments are before I make them. That way you guys can follow along and actually see what I'm, what I'm adjusting when I'm doing these individual adjustments. Um, some of the nice things about these is this plug-in, it's obviously on the slow side, 7826, which is actually, I got one right here. Here's a 7A26. It's the dual uh, dual plug-in. It's also 200 megahertz, um, so it's faster than this frame can actually go. Not the fastest plug-in on the planet. However, it is the fastest one megohm input plug-in. The other ones, I think it's the 24, the 7A24. It does 400 megahertz, but it's 50 ohm input. It's not one megohm, so we have a little bit of a difference there. This, as you can see, is a lot more complex in it than 
this guy. There's a lot less stuff in this one. So I figured I'd start with a simple one. I do have a couple of these to fix. If there's interest in repairing uh, some of the higher speed plugins, let me know. I'd be more than happy to do a video on those. So with that, all the lab gears warm. Let me uh, jump into the adjustment procedure. This particular adjustment procedure doesn't need an extension. The time base ones do because some of the adjustments on the time base are on the top, so you have to have it out while you're adjusting them. So you do need an extension for the horizontal, but for the vertical, you can actually get to everything. They put all the adjustments. It sits in the scope like this, so they put all the adjustments on this side, so you can put it over in the leftmost slot, and you can actually get to all the adjustments that you'd need to align the plug-in. So we know from the previous video that the scope, the frame is good, power supply is good, frame's in alignment, so we're good to go ahead and align the plug-in. So everything's been warming up. So what I will do is I will, I'll jump into the calibration document and we'll get started. Okay, so there's not many controls on this. Position's mid-range, polarity is up, magnification is 1x, volts per division is 10 millivolts, AC-DC ground switch is in DC, the variable is in cal, and the first thing we're going to do is check and adjust the gain so we figure out what signals it needs, and then I'll be right back. So it's 50 millivolts of signal into the... 10 millivolts position, we're looking for five, um, five divisions of gain. We do have five. It's reading a, a, just a touch high, so I'll bring that down just a little bit. The gain adjustment is actually this gain on the front panel. So let me get an adjustment. So for this, we can bring it Ooh, that control's stiff. So we can collapse it like that. But then we want five divisions. And I want the graticule in the middle of the line. So we're here and we're right there. Zoom in on that real quick, because I can actually use the camera as a guide. All right, so right around the middle of the graticule, that looks good. That looks good. I'm going to have to adjust the triggering on this time base. It's not wanting to stay triggered very well, probably because of the noise. All right, let me figure out what the next adjustment is, and then I'll be right back. Okay, the next thing it wants me to check is the variable gain control. So if I turn this all the way down, we should get a two divisions or less. Get that triggered again. And we are less than two divisions. That's about 1.8. So that looks really good there. Next is adjusting the 10x gain. So let me figure out what signals that needs, and I'll be back. Okay, we have a really ugly square wave because the cable's long and it's a noisy environment. Um, the adjustment is 10x gain, which is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust that real quick. It's a little low. I'm adjusting for middle of this and middle of up here. This is also, let's see, 10x gain.
And that looks pretty good. The Graticule's right in the center. Oh, no, it's a little low. Since it moved it. All right, there we go. So, Graticule is, that looks good for now. It's pretty much reading the same, centered, drifting around just a little bit, but it that looks good. So it's evenly spaced here, and it's evenly spaced up here. So I'm good with that. Let me figure out what the next adjustment is, and I'll be back. Okay, we're gonna do an accuracy check on the vertical deflection accuracy. So I just need to run it up through all the settings. So at five millivolts, we'll be at 20. And we should have four divisions, which we do. 10 millivolts. Five divisions, which we do. 20 millivolts. Should also have five divisions, which we do. 50 millivolts. Four divisions, 0.1. These are actually all looking really good. Point two. Yep. Point five. Yep. That's done. That's one volt. Two. And we're good there. Five. We are good there. That's 20 volts total. Now what we need to adjust is the DC balance. Let me get that one figured out, and I'll be right back. Okay, to check the DC balance on the vertical amplifier, we use the variable control, and we rotate it throughout its range and we don't want the trace to move more than half a division vertically. So, l it's out. So, we know the DC balance is out. Get my pointer here real quick. The DC balance pot is this guy right here, is what I'll be adjusting. So what I'm going to do is... Turn it all the way up. And I'm going to bring it down about halfway. And I'll bring it all the way down. Now see, it got a lot worse. I know why I was doing that wrong now. I was doing that not on the right volts per division. When you do that, it needs to be on 10 millivolts per division to adjust the DC balance.
All right, there we go. We just got it. So I'm going to take the cal knob. Actually, I can prove that because you'll see it go uncalibrated here when I rotate it. So I'll uncalibrate it. We have the greater than sign, so it's uncalibrated. Now if I move it up, move it down, that DC amplifier is now back in alignment. Mm. Okay, setting up the scope, uh, we're going to 5 millivolts per division. I also needed to get a RC normalizer for 20 picofarads. These need to match the input of the plug-in. So the plug-in is stamped with 20 picofarads. This is a 20 picofarad normalizer. That goes when you use the normalizers they need to go directly on the input. These go on first. So we're set to 5 millivolts. And the signal they want is 6 divisions of, of display of a 1 kilohertz square wave. So let me get some cabling. We'll get the 106 hooked up. Because it actually does my square waves the best or I should say has the most drive. So I will be right back. I take that back. You do need a you need an extension for this one. The uh, C100 is blocked by the rail of the scope frame. So I need to uh, I needed the extension for this one. I need a longer cable. So let me get a longer coax and we'll see if we can't do this adjustment. Okay, that's about the least amount of noise I can get. I'm looking at the square corner. I actually need to adjust. Bring that down just a little bit. That was overcompensated. We'll put that right about there. All right, so we have a nice squared off corner right there. So that looks good. On to the next adjustment. Some of the noise on the trace is just the environment in my lab. My lab is suboptimal when I'm recording because I've got computers. I've got a computer over here. I've got a computer over there. I've got the side of the scope off. There's bad grounds, things like that. So some of the noise is just the Wi-Fi's on. Um, some of the noise is just to support recording. I have a whole bunch of switching power supplies going on, and that was a 5 millivolts per division measurement with the side panel off. So Plus I have LED lighting and a bunch of other things. So there's lots of environmental noise going around. That's why the trace was kind of flying all over the place. Uh, it will get better as we go up in voltage because that the noise will fall away. So the last adjustment that I was doing was in this metal can. It was C100. The next series of adjustments, which are in table 5.2, are these adjustments right here. So these will be d uh, compensating the attenuator network, getting it all ready. Uh, getting it to be leveled out. So let me get my, um, let me hook the signals back up and then we'll get six divisions of display. First adjustment for the 10 millivolts division is C106 and C107 back here. So this is for 10 millivolts. This is for 20 millivolts. 50 millivolts. Point one is just a check. And then point five is this one, and that, and that does the entire attenuator network. So that's what I'll be doing next. So we'll start with the 10 millivolt setting. And we'll go from there.
So I need a little bit more. Not much, just a little. So what I'm looking at is this front corner where I'm adjusting. So what I'm going to do is I will detune C106. So I pull this out, see how it goes way down. So we'll tune that up. And then as soon as I touch the attenuator, and noise comes back. I will detune 107. So 107 doesn't have that much. Unless I'm not in it. No, I wasn't in it. All right, so 106, we need to bring that back up. And 107 was actually the flatness right in here that I was looking at. So that was 107. So we have a nice sharp corner now. So that's the 10. We'll go up to the 20. So we're out a little bit. This uh, 20 is a little slow. So what we'll do is C10 and C11. So we're on to these two adjustments. That has good flatness now, but it does need to be Bed up. Oh, yeah. Oh, that adjustment. Pushing on the controls too hard can adjust the environment of them. So I have to be real gentle not to push too hard because that can adjust the capacitance which, when you remove the tool, can actually cause the spike to come back. Next up is 50 millivolts. To give that some more amplitude. And this doesn't look too bad, but we'll touch it up. does not take much to get these things to go nuts. There we go. Nice and square. So now we have to check point one. There's no adjustment here. So I went back to 50 millivolts, and I'm redoing 14 and 15 because one had too much more tail than I wanted.
So I'm going to have to comp compromise this a little bit. Going to tune down that. I'm going to go back to 50. So I'm going to move that over to there. It should be within 1.5 divisions. So I need to speed up that just a little bit but not all the way up till it's flat. So like right about there. I still have this little tail, but it's That looks a lot better, actually. <laughs> yeah, so it's within the 1.5 divisions of the um, spec. So that's going to be good for the 50 millivolts and 100 millivolts. So next is 0.2. I have to remove the attenuator for that. So now it's just straight signal. come way back down. Okay. So that looks undercompensated. But 0 0.5... Okay, I'm just checking it back again with a 50 ohm terminator. So 10 millivolts is fine. Twenty is a little high. So I'm back to C110, C11. Back to point five. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, point five. Point oh five. Now we'll check one. Still a little fast. Okay, I like that on point five. I like that on one, point two. That is very quick. Just trying to balance all of these.
That's good. That's good. Okay, there we go. Got the attenuator imbalanced. That was C14, C15. That one was kind of a pain. All right, point 0.5, we want to adjust C18, C19. So we'll wind this up. Oop. Pull that off. Oop, no, that one actually looks really good. So we're good there. We'll check the one volt. One volt looks good. Two volt looks okay. Five volt. Take off the terminator. Directly on here. A little undercompensated, but it looks okay. Nothing crazy. Okay, I've got everything set up for the high frequency compensation. Um, actually, this doesn't have a. No, this doesn't have a four and five either. So we're adjusting this. Oop, we're adjusting this capacitor, the high frequency. Right here, just for a for a nice corner. So it's the only one adjustment in these plugins. All right, so we have this. It's really hard to see, but we have this peak coming up. I'm gonna pull that down into the response. So there we go. Check the 10x response. Oh. You can actually see the noise pulsing. The pulsing is some of the noise in the lab. There's a beacon time that I actually can't find. I have no idea where that is. I'm still trying to hunt down what that might be in my lab. When I find out, I'll let you guys know. But we have a nice step response. So what we'll do is let's check the... Um, we'll just do a bandwidth check now. But that actually concludes the calibration of the 7A, 15A. Um, I'll ju we'll just check the bandwidth for, for grins, see where it's at, and let me get that set up and I'll be back. Okay, I'm ready to check the bandwidth on the plug-in. I have not actually checked this yet, but so we have eight divisions of display of 50 kilohertz. So what I'm gonna do is
actually, we need to go up a little bit higher because I need to dial this up till we're at 5.6 divisions. So... Actually, we're not doing too bad for this plug-in in this frame. Uh, I have a 3 dB point of 71.9 megahertz, so it didn't hit the full 75, but that was also to be expected because this is a 7600 mainframe, not a 7700 mainframe. So we have our uh, 3 dB point, um, 71.9. I was expecting around 60 megahertz, so that's plenty good enough for this for this plug-in. So what I will do now is, uh, so that one's actually done. So let's see, I'll have to label that one. I have this plug-in right here, which is another one that I did. Zoom out real quick. This one right here. So what I'll do is for this particular scope, this can actually go on the bench now, and I can get this put away. Um, he's going to live right over here, because I'm going to hook up the small curve tracer that I built to um, to this guy. He's going to be my XY screen, and then I have that other curve tracer plug-in, which will be the next video, that is also going to live in that middle section. So I'll have some fast scopes, and then these two 7603 frames. I don't know why, but I've ended up... Um, kind of liking the 7603s. I like the large screen on them. They do work very well. They're just really good scopes. I, I, w I wish they made a screen that was this big that was faster than 100 megahertz, but I'll take what I can get. My 7904 has the smaller uh, screen on it, but it does up to 500, so I'm not hurting for bandwidth in the lab. But uh, yeah, so that um, concludes the Scope Cal video. This one was actually pretty quick. I expected it to be longer, but then again, the last time I did a plug-in, it was a 7A26, so there's twice as much stuff to do in one of those. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I do check the comments regularly. And uh, thanks a lot for stopping by.